Hi, welcome to video number four. We're going to continue talking about the structure of the atom, and what we're going to talk about today is a very interesting experiment that was done by Ernest Rutherford. Now, as you may recall, the last time that we talked, we saw how we had gotten to the plum pudding model that was uh, introduced by Thomson. And that is the key or the interest that Ernest Rutherford has uh, to study in this uh, particular experiment that we're going to be looking at. Um, Rutherford had discovered that there are some type of radioactive particles which are called alpha particles and he from the characteristics of the alpha particles he thinks that they are ideal to shoot these alpha particles at the atom and try to find out some more about the structure of that positive matrix that Thompson had proposed in his plum pudding that kind of dough material so alpha particles have this particular characteristics. They are positively charged, they have a, have a plus two charge, they're very heavy, they have uh, the mass equivalent to that of an atom of helium, and that may not sound like a lot, but compared to the electron, they're very, very heavy. So they're going to be about 8,000 times heavier than the electron. So that was a great thing to shoot at this nucleus, uh, sorry, at this atom. And the final thing is that they travel with a very high speed. So that's actually going to be another thing that is very important because he wants them to continue traveling ahead. So what he does is he sets up uh, an experiment in such a way as having a place uh, that shoots out alpha particles. It's a source of alpha particles, a radioactive material. And in there, he has it in a, in a cage, in a box, that can actually just shoot alpha particles in one direction. Now, when he does that, he gets that most of the alpha particles are actually hitting just one spot, but every so often, instead of going through the piece of gold foil, and that's a very thin piece of gold, it's kind of basically like uh, what you call gold leaf nowadays. Um, it's very few atoms in thickness. Well, what he found is that almost all of them went through but occasionally a couple of them had large deviations and even some of them bounced back. They didn't even go through the foil but actually were reflected. All right? And the way he saw that those particles were reflected was because since they're positively charged, they caused zinc sulfide to actually shine, to, to uh, have scintillation. Scintillation is just another fancy word for saying sparking. So he would see sparking where those alpha particles hit and he was able to measure and see where they were. Well, guess what? His results were such as this. One, 99 plus of his alpha particles went undeflected through the gold foil. Two, some, just a few, were deflected. The angle was significantly larger. And finally, some of the alpha particles actually bounced back, okay? Now, when we look at this information, and you can see it from the little diagram above in, your, um, in the little slide that we have there, you can see that actually the alpha particle deflection path was curved. It wasn't like it was bouncing, which would have given you an, a really straight angle, but here the lines were curved, and we can see it a little bit better on the next slide. All right? Here you can see how those particles are actually just being curved, and they give you that particular path all right so what does that mean what did he come up with from these ideas all right and same like we did for Thompson I want you to try to figure out why he came to this conclusion so I want you to write the reason you think in your notes for what and why he came up with this idea all right one most of the volume of the atom is empty space Two, there is a tiny, highly dense, and positive nucleus. All right? I want you to talk about each one of those three things. Why is it tiny? Why is it dense? And why is it positive? All right? And finally, he says the electrons are orbiting around the nucleus. And once again, why do you think this is so? All right? Try to use your uh, logic, your critical thinking to going back 
to the results that he got and why do they necessitate this particular conclusions all right well from this idea rutherford kept on thinking about well now that i have this nucleus and that i know that it's positive i need to find out how it's made all right and so he proposes the idea that the nucleus instead of being made out of one solid thing kind of like what thompson had proposed he says it's made out of little particles and each one has a plus one charge each one is like the nucleus of a hydrogen atom which he knows to be the smallest atom and he calls those particles protons all right now working with another scientist his name is henry mosley he actually found out how many protons there was in the nucleus of every element that was known at the time and what he found is that the mass of the protons could not explain the total mass of the atom therefore being the smart guy he was he said huh, no problem let me propose a new particle I'm gonna propose the neutron and it's gonna have a mass very similar to that of the proton but it's gonna have no charge now why is it that he proposes a neutron why does he propose it to be neutral and the other thing is why does he not propose to add more protons okay why have this neutral particle so keep that in mind jot your answers down it's okay to come up with a weird idea but I want to hear what you have to say and so Rutherford puts it all together in a kind of solar system atomic model some idea in which we have a nucleus that is orbited by the electrons all right and so we've got that the atom contains a tiny nucleus that it has the positive and the neutral charges and it contains most of the mass of the atom in addition you have the electrons orbiting around the nucleus with those pieces of information we can now characterize any type of atom any species that is made out of a nucleus and electrons and protons and neutrons and all those kind of things and so with those subatomic particles we can define it we can talk about it we can see some of their properties all right we can be able to see what element is going to be what mass is going to have and what charge it's going to have and so let's look at how that is done all right oh finally all of the numbers that we're going to be talking about are integers why is that well this one I'm going to answer for you we have protons neutrons and electrons and they're going to be making up the atom you cannot have partial half of a proton half a neutron in an atom half an electron for that matter so the numbers that we're going to talk about characterizing this species this little nuclei are actually going to be um, integers all right we cannot have fractions and so here we go one we need some large letter unique letter combination is a one or two letter combination always the first one being capital all right and that's going to be identifying our element all right now the symbol and the element depend on the atomic number the atomic number is symbolized by a capital letter Z and it's the number of protons now the number of protons in an atom in a species can never change all right unless you have a nuclear reaction we're not gonna worry about that but in chemistry it can never change that is the one characteristic that always tells you what element you have in addition to the atomic number you have the mass number the mass number is the total number of protons plus neutrons all right that means that is the number of what is called nuclear particles or nucleons different from neutrons all right particles in the nucleus are called nucleons so mass number is total number of protons and neutrons or total number of nucleons and finally we have the charge all right the charge is going to be the difference between the number of protons 
and the number of electrons. So it's going to be the number of protons minus the number of electrons. All right, and that's how we can find out the charge. If you have equal number of protons and electrons, you're going to have a neutral atom. If you have more protons than you have electrons, you are going to have a positive atom or a positive species. All right, in this case, it's called an ion. And if you have more electrons than you have protons, you're going to have a negative ion. All right, little keywords here. A positive ion is called a cation, and a negative ion is called an anion. And we'll talk more about those coming up. All right. So what I want you to do now is to attempt to complete the following set of symbols. All right. I want you to, in the front column, actually write that down a symbol with atomic number, mass number, and the charge. If you complete this table right now, as you're working right there, we can continue working on this next time. All right? So thank you so much, and until our next meeting.